So today we're going to start examining coastal erosion or erosion that is associated with the ocean or along the coast. Well, these are the kind of sediments you would expect to find at the coast. At the beach, you know, the beaches are made of sand. Remember that sand is just a particular size of sediment. So this is an example where stuff was eroded, it was moved, and it gets deposited along the coast, and that's why we have sandy beaches. The question becomes, where do those sediments come from? Well, we get in these pictures here, we see sediments coming down the drain as the water runs across the ground, it picks up dirt, takes it in there. We can see it over here. There's our sediments being moved. A lot of those sediments are going to wind up in the river because rivers are big collections of runoff. And you can see all of that sediment here in the Chattahoochee River. Well, where will those sediments wind up? Where do most rivers wind up? Most rivers wind up in the ocean. So rivers bring those sediments and they drop them into the ocean. They drop sand in the ocean. And you can actually see it here. Here's a big, huge collection of sediments. You can see it moving around out there in the water. That's the stuff. That's the sediments that the rivers are bringing to the ocean. That's how sediments get into the ocean. Now think about the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River has the third, third, third largest watershed in the world, drains 41% of our country. Think of all those rivers picking up dirt. All of those sediments are going to wind up in the ocean. The Mississippi River hits the Gulf of Mexico in Louisiana, and you can actually see it in the air. You can see all of those sediments where the river meets the ocean. It's just pouring more and more sand into the ocean every single day because the water moves across the surface. The water picks up sediments, gets to the ocean, and then just kind of drops it. So today, we're going to talk about how the action of the water in the oceans moves stuff around, causes erosion. Now you can see in this picture here, there was some sand right here, and you can see that now it is not there. Well, not too hard to figure out what happened. The water came up onto the shore, and then it grabbed some sand and took it away. That's erosion. It's the movement of stuff, in this case sand, by water from the ocean with the help of gravity. So the ocean can cause erosion because the ocean can move sediments. Here you can actually see it. You can see large collections of sand just kind of float around out there in the water. That's erosion, that's stuff being moved by the ocean. Now, remember, these two factors still hold true. It's the amount of water and the speed of water that determines how much erosion happens. But how can the ocean cause so much erosion? Remember, water in the ocean basically isn't moving. I mean, there's ocean currents and a little bit of movement, but for the most part, it's not like a fast moving river. So the trick is with the ocean is that it's a lot of water and we know that the amount of water makes a difference. So more water causes more erosion. Plus, when you think about the ocean, you think about sand. Sand's pretty small. It gets moved pretty easily. So that's one of the reasons why the ocean can cause so much erosion. An ocean can't move a boulder but it can move sand around. So how does the amount of water in the ocean vary? You can actually have more or less water. We refer to the tides. If you've ever been to the beach, you know, high and low tide. At high tide, there's more water near the shore. And at low tide, there is less. Something like you see here. Well, obviously you have more water coming in, moves back out during low tide. You're gonna have more stuff moved around. So the amount of water can actually change in the ocean and the amount of water affects the amount of erosion. Now the speed of the ocean, the ocean we pretty much said is, is still, but if you've ever been to the beach, you know the waves are moving. Waves are caused by wind. So the ocean's speed, its wave action can change depending upon the amount of wind. Now there's always some amount of wind at the shore. But remember we had this discussion about the coast and islands, especially which way the wind blows. There tends to be more wind on one side of an island or on one coast than the other. That's the windward versus the leeward side of an island. On the windward side, the, wi the winds are hitting the shore. But on the leeward side, the winds are actually pushing away from the shore.
Well, that's going to change the wave action and how those waves interact with the sediments. So it's going to change the amount of erosion. Here's the windward side of Aruba. This is the side of the island where the wind is just pushing a lot of waves. And you can see there's a lot of stuff being moved around. There's these big, huge chunks of rock that were actually moved. Look at all this area in here. That was all material that's been moved because the waves are moving so fast because there's a lot of wind on that side of the island. Here's the leeward side of the island. Notice here, we've got lots of sand. We've got a big, wide, sandy beach here. Nothing's being moved. It seems like all the sediments are just hanging out there, and they kind of are because the wind is blowing that way. So you don't get fast moving waves hitting the shore on this side of the island. Well, without fast moving waves, you don't have as much erosion. You actually have more deposition. So islands typically tend to have a sandy side and they have a lot more rugged or eroded side. Now, you can also see it in this picture here. You can see how this side over here is very shallow because there's a lot of sand on that side. Keeps the water pretty shallow. On this side here, notice there is no sand because of the wave action, it's able to move away the sand so easily. There's a lot of erosion on that side, which means the water on that side of the island is very, very deep. You can also see you can actually see the difference in the waves. You can kind of see how those waves are. The water looks so much rougher than it does over here. Over here, it's very calm because the wind is blowing that way. On this side, it's very rough because that's the side that's getting hit with the wind. Well, the side that gets hit with the wind is going to have more erosion than the side that doesn't. This is the windward versus leeward side of a different island in the Caribbean. Notice this is the leeward side. This is the side that's not getting hit by the wind. This is the side that is. So this side here ends up being a lot rougher and rugged because there's a lot more erosion going on. Now hurricanes. Hurricanes are very big, windy, powerful water events and hurricanes can cause a lot of erosion. All along the Gulf Coast, especially when they get hit by erosion, uh, get hit by hurricanes, you notice a big difference. This picture here is before the hurricane, and this is after. You can see how much stuff was moved. This is a barrier island. You notice some of it is just gone now because the hurricane came along and made faster and more water hit that island, which caused more erosion. This is Long Beach, New Jersey. You can see they had a nice wide sandy beach and the hurricane came along, faster water, more water hitting the shore. All of their sand is gone. It got eroded. Now there's some patterns to this coastal erosion and deposition. The first is this idea of longshore drift. Now you might think that waves tend to hit the shore like this, but they typically don't because the wind doesn't typically blow straight perpendicular to the shore. Generally, you're always gonna have the wind kind of coming in at an angle, and it might not be that angle, it might be the opposite way, it might be steeper, it might be more shallow, but the waves tend to hit the shore at an angle, which means stuff gets pushed a little bit more this way than it does the other way because of how the wind's hitting the shore. That's what's called longshore drift. It's the drifting or movement of sediments down the coast. It looks something like this. Waves are gonna come in like this and then they're gonna push sediments in one direction down the coast. That's longshore drift. It's also the reason why when rivers meet the ocean, they don't tend to have a nice pretty opening to the ocean. This this river is bringing a bunch of sediments and trying to drop them off right here. But the waves are pushing them this way. So that's why the river has now had to kind of had to curve itself to get around the pile of sediments that the waves are piling up right here. So what can we do about this coastal erosion? One thing that's typically done is what we call beach nourishment. If you lose your beach, you can get it back. All you have to do is go get some sand and drop it right back there. Places like Cape May, New Jersey, they typically 
lose a lot of their sand. They have big problems with erosion. Well, this hotel right here sells rooms because they have a nice wide sandy beach there. You bring your kids there, you pay $200 a night, the kids go out and play in the beach, play in the ocean. Well, if you look in this picture up here, the beach is gone. Nobody's going to pay to stay in that hotel, at least not for the same rate, because you, know, you don't have a beach to go play at. Well, beach nourishment is the practice of putting sand back on the beach. All you do is just replace sand that has been eroded by the ocean. And here you can see some examples of beach nourishment happening. This here is Atlantic City, New Jersey, the same thing. Something, a storm came along where just over time they lost their sand. And notice here they've already put out some new sand and they're working on filling it in this area here. You can see it in all of these pictures. See, they've got to that point and they're going to keep on going and filling in the beach with more sand. Now, there's some pros and cons to beach nourishment. There's some good things and bad things about rebuilding your beach. First of all, a good advantage of beach nourishment is it means you can always have a beach. It's not really complicated. You just go dig up some sand and usually you get off the bottom of the ocean from somewhere else and you just put it right back on the beach. But it is a very expensive proposition. It's specialized equipment. It's time consuming. It can cost up to a million dollars a mile to replace your beach. The cost is primarily determined by how nice of sand do you want to put back there. Obviously, if you want white, nice, fluffiest, powdery sand, you're going to have to pay more money for it. Another disadvantage is it disrupts the natural movement of sediments. Remember, erosion is natural. The ocean took some sediments away from your beach. It does it naturally, and now you're messing with the order of things. The final con is you typically have to do it over and over again because you're not changing the ocean. The ocean is going to keep moving sand away. So that means over a period of time, you're going to have to come back and replace the sand again. Jekyll Island, Georgia is a great case study in coastal erosion. Jekyll Island is a state park. It's an island. It has a beach. It's just a, a beach island. But because it's a state park, we can't do things like beach nourishment there because it has to stay in its natural state. Plus, there's no big fancy hotels that are willing to pay the money to have the beach nourishment done. So like all islands, like all coastlines, they have that longshore drift kind of thing. So their, their sand, is their beach is getting moved around. But because once again, it's a state park, you can't do anything unnatural like beach nourishment. There's some places now in Jekyll where you only have a beach at low tide. The whole northern end of the island is like this. They have very extreme tides and there's a big difference in the amount of water. So they have big erosion problems. And you can imagine here, no beach. You can only go to the beach here when the tide is out. So they've done some things to help protect some of the homes and the hotels and such. They put in some riprap and they do that so that the water can't take away those rocks and it can't take away more sand and this guy's house doesn't fall into the ocean. The wind and the waves are moving the sand this way. Jekyll Island is actually getting bigger on the south end and at the top end, it's actually losing sand. Ironically, a lot of the nicest hotels and such were originally built on this north end of the island. And now the nicest beaches are actually on the south end of the island. Now, how do we control this? So let's talk about coastal erosion and what can be done to help lessen coastal erosion. Well, we know that slower water means less erosion than faster water. And the speed of the water in the ocean is primarily caused by the waves, which is from the wind. You'll see behind me a lot of open ocean back there with lots of wind that is going to make the water just keep going faster and faster so when that water hits the shore it's going to be able to grab and move a lot more sediment and we don't want that the question is what can be done to make water in the ocean or water from waves slow down one thing that can be done to make water slow down is to stop cutting down all of the plants at the shore 
you can see how choppy this water is and this water is being pushed right up against this line of plants these are mangroves along the florida coast and traditionally we cut all these down and we filled in sand and we made beaches but then there was nothing to keep this water from coming and grabbing our sand and taking it away what these trees do, what these mangroves, what these plants can do, is make the water slow down. And you can see from how choppy the water is out there to how calm it is in here. These plants and trees left along the shore can help make water slow down. And slow water does not cause as much erosion as fast water. You can also use riprap, just like we use for streams Riprap works one of two ways. It makes the water slow down so it is going slower, won't pick up as much like sand, or the rock is just too big to be moved by the water. Here you can see a case where the water is going to come on shore. The water's over here, and as the waves come in and they go over these rocks, they have to slow down a little bit. These are like speed bumps for waves. Makes the waves slow down, which means they can't pick up as much stuff, not as much erosion. Same example here, except now the water's coming in and the water's not going over the top of this. This is not a speed bump for water. This is where the rocks were put in the place of the water because the water, the waves were just taking too much sediment. And they put the rocks there because the waves can't grab a rock and move it back out to sea. Now here's the case you can see where they, they put some riprap at the bottom because the waves were coming in and you can see what was happening. They were taking away the sediments here. And now we've got a very, very steep cliff. Well, you put the riprap in there so that these waves go a little bit slower or they don't move the rocks and hopefully it reduces the erosion. And the people who live up here, they're very happy for that riprap at the bottom because if erosion got too bad, their house falls into the sea. Remember this picture I showed you a little bit earlier about this a nice apartment building in previous uh, slideshow? Well, it didn't work. The waves still came in and took too many sediments from the base of the cliff, and now people can't live in this apartment building because you can see all of the erosion that's happened here. The ocean has just grabbed too much stuff. Here's a case in San Diego where they had a parking lot and this beach parking lot used to come out here and they had a bad storm and the storm came in and took too much of the land away and the parking lot collapsed. Well, they didn't want to lose the rest of the parking lot. So what they did was they put some really big rocks in here. That's riprap. And now if the water comes in, the water comes in, it cannot grab these rocks and move them because they're too big. So my parking lot stays in place. Here's a fancy example of riprap. It's basically just a brick wall or concrete wall. And it works the same way. They were having too much erosion here and the water kept grabbing stuff and moving it. So they basically paved over the shore and made it where the water can't touch the sediments. And if the water can't touch the sediments, can't move it. Same thing here in Louisiana. Concrete steps, a concrete wall here along the lake where the waves now come in, can't even touch the soil. They can't touch it, they can't move it. Now, sometimes we take this riprap and we put it in a special pattern. And these special patterns make water do something specific. A groin. A groin is a wall or a pile of rocks that is put perpendicular to the shore to control erosion. Key definition here with a groin is that it's a pile of rocks perpendicular to the shore and what a groin does is it makes water in the ocean drop sediments it helps to prevent erosion basically here's what happens we know that we get that longshore drift the the sediments are going to move down the coast and you know i don't want to lose my beach from right here so i build a groin and my sediments that that get moving down this way kind of get caught up right here. So I still wind up with a pile of sand. My sand stays right here instead of going way away. And you can see how they work here. You can see each one of these 
groin sticking out into the water and you can see how the sand has, is staying in between them. You can see in this picture here, the longshore drift is moving this way. They built a groin and all of the sand stayed right there. They had a groin right here, all of the sand piled up right here. So now over the whole length of the beach, you still have enough sand to have a beach. So a groin only acts to make the water drop the sand after it's picked it up. But what can we do to keep the water from picking up the sand in the first place? Well, if we make water go slower, it means it won't be able to move the sand in the first place. I don't have to worry about it making it drop it somewhere. Okay, so here I am at the beach. I'm in Montego Bay, Jamaica. If you'll see behind me, there's the ocean and there's nothing to block the wind. So the wind blows fast across the ocean and it makes waves. Without anything to block the wind or make it slow down, you get a lot of wave action. You can see behind me there, the frequency of the waves. Well, those waves are going to hit the shore. And when they do, they're gonna move some of the sediment, some of the sand around. All right, so now here I am on the shore and you can see behind me, there's the water line and look at all of that sand that has been removed because of the action of the waves. Now, this big fancy hotel behind me, they don't wanna lose any more sand because the beach is the reason why people come here. So they have to do something to make it so that the waves can't pick up and move the sand. Here's one of the things that can be done. They've piled some concrete blocks up here in a line parallel to the shore. Now this is called a break water. Basically what it does is it makes the waves slow down. It's like a speed bump for waves. And you can see the waves breaking over the, the breakwater behind me. Now what that does is when the waves get on this side of the breakwater, they're not moving so fast. And slower water can't pick up and grab that sand and take it away. So this hotel manages to keep their beach intact. So once again, a breakwater is a pile of rocks or concrete. It's a wall built parallel to the shore that makes waves slow down so that they can't pick up and remove as much sediments or sand. Here you can see a breakwater. There's just kind of random piles of rocks put up there parallel to the shore. Those are the speed bumps. Now the water can still kind of squeeze its way in between, but it has to go slower. And you'll notice how much more sand is here behind the breakwater versus over here. So we also have another problem. The ocean is gonna pick up and move stuff around and sometimes it'll drop it where we don't want it. Here we can see a whole bunch of sediments floating around back there in the water. Now, you should see what this is right here is a ship channel. My boats, my little driving boat wants to come in here and go to the marina back here, marina over here. So I need to keep this area here free of sediments. If that area were to fill up with sand, if the ocean were to drop a bunch of sand in this area here, well then I can't get my boat in and out. And that's a problem. That's a case where I have deposition happening where I don't want it to. This is Blind Pass in Sanibel Island, Florida. And same kinds of, they got some some boats, they got some boats that used to come out here, go under the bridge and go out here to the ocean. And you can see this area is all full of sand. And this was a problem. They kept filling up with sand and like, hey, we can't get our boats in and out through here. So what do we do? Well, the first thing you can do is what's called dredging. And dredging is just the removal of sediments that have piled up in a waterway. And you can see it's a pretty simple process in terms of engineering. You have a have an excavator backhoe and you put it out there on a, on a barge and it just reaches down in the water and scoops up the sand that has been piled up before it gets too deep. The problem is this is expensive. You got to pay somebody to do it. It's time consuming. Where do you put the sand that you dig up? It's a lot easier to keep the sand from getting there in the first place than it is to dredge it.
So here's what they did in that same photo. Now you'll notice there's water going all the way out. And here's what they did. Right here, they put in this pile of rocks. And the pile of rocks, because the longshore drift was happening this way, made the sand pile up right here so that it did not pile up right there. And my channel stayed clear. So here we have the Noyo River in Northern California, and this is where it meets the sea. Now, just this way on this river, on the other side of this bridge, is a very large marina with lots of boats parked there, both pleasure boats and commercial fishing boats. And those people need to park their boats in deep water. Well, the problem is the ocean out there is constantly pushing sediments and sand back and forth. And we don't want the sand to come this way and clog the river and make our marina too shallow for our boats to park. So what they've done here is they built this structure here and this structure here. This is a wall and this is a pile of rocks. They are both called jetties. J-E-T-T-Y. A jetty is a wall or a barrier that is meant to stop sand from being deposited in a ship channel or in a harbor or marina and you can see how this thing is working if you see over here look at all of that nice sandy beach over there all of that sand might have been pushed into here and made my ship channel too shallow for the boats to get in and out so you see that a jetty is a wall or a barrier of rocks that is meant to stop sand from being dropped where we don't want it specifically in a ship channel or in a marina. Now sand dunes, you have these big piles of sand typically near the beach and they actually serve a very important function for controlling erosion. So there's the ocean out there and going this direction I've got some nice fancy beach houses and my nice fancy beach houses don't want their yard or their land underneath removed because then the house falls over it gets washed out to sea so you notice the beach houses aren't right close to the shore there's actually a little bit of land in there with these beach sand dunes and what happens is if there's a extremely high tide or a hurricane or a very windy day that pushes the waves on the shore if the waves hit these sand dunes well, maybe they don't go over the dunes. It stops the water from coming too far inshore. Even if the water does manage to come over the top of the sand dunes, well, it's going to be going slower because that sand dune kind of acts as a speed bump for water. So the sand dunes at the shore act to hold back water, make it where the water can't come up on the shore and or it makes the water go a lot slower, which causes less erosion. Now, just like with streams and rivers, the plants here make a big difference. You might have been to the beach and noticed signs like this, or you notice the long boardwalks that they build going through these beaches. You just can't walk anywhere you want to on these dunes because what these plants do are hold the sand in place. You know, sand moves really easily. And these plants here, they are putting roots down into the sand so that the sand kind of stays in place. And we need that sand there because we need those dunes to act as a method of erosion control if we have a hurricane or just a bad high tide or a really windy day. So next time you go to the beach, if you see these signs, now you know you can't walk on the dunes because you'll kill the plants. And we need the plants to hold those beach dunes in place. Notice here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, this is as close as you can build to the beach. Nice wide sandy beach out there, but they leave this area here open for erosion control because if water tries to come up here, it's got to go over all those multiple sand dunes, which is going to make it go slower. And slower is going to mean it's going to have less erosion. If I had built my, my hotel right here or my house right there, there'd be nothing to help control the erosion, and I'd likely lose the sand under my house. I'd lose my house. In Hawaii, where they're constantly getting new beaches formed because of the uh, volcanic processes there, 
people purposely plant trees out there on the beaches to help hold the beach in place because without it, it's too windy, waves are too strong, and you're going to lose your beach. Now, that brings up another issue, wind. And we've talked about wind uh, before, and we know that wind can cause erosion, and we know it is windy at the beach. Especially when you start talking about sand, because sand's pretty small. It can get moved pretty easy. A wind's not going to move a boulder, but it can blow my sand around and cause me to lose my beach. So what can we do about wind erosion at the beach? You've probably seen these if you've been to the beach somewhere before, but never knew what they were. These are called a sand fence. And what this does is it makes wind slow down. So the wind's going to pick up sand and blow it around. You know this. You've been to the beach in the wind today, and the wind blows the sand in your eyes. Okay, yeah, you get it. But as the wind hits this fence, well, the wind can go through it. But the sand it's carrying hits those slats and gets dropped right there in that spot. So a sand fence is a way to make wind drop the sand that is trying to move because I don't want to lose my sand at the beach. I want to keep my beach in place. 